found a pink tarantula. So we're actually back tracking back to where Rex and Evan are. Let's see it. Oh, wow. Look at that thing. This spider might not look like much, but this is actually the baby of the spider we're looking for. That being said, we have a long way to go and just a few hours to find one of Ecuador's rarest spiders. So we are getting ready to ship out and meet one of Emilio's contacts for purple bird-eating tarantulas. They are supposedly massive, they are supposedly purple, and of course they are tarantulas, so we are all very excited to see them. This is it. We're shipping out for our biggest adventure into Ecuadorian wilderness. Our target, one of the rarest and most beautiful spiders on the planet. See, I've been fascinated by spiders and other creepy crawlies all my life. Over my years studying them, I've come to realize that all around us, these creatures seem to occupy a secret world, a parallel universe that runs just alongside ours that we literally walk past every day. If you know where to look, you can discover the secrets of this world, and the deeper you venture, the stranger these secrets get. Out here in the Ecuadorian dry forest, we're after a truly legendary animal, the Purple Bloom Bird Eater. And in order to find it, we're gonna need some help. Enter Juan. He's an ecologist doing conservation work here in western Ecuador. His Wild Guayaquil Initiative raises awareness for all the amazing creatures of the dry forest, and he hopes to protect this rapidly shrinking biome through education. Our shared goal? To find one of these ultra-rare tarantulas on the mountain ridge where he does his studies. But in order to get there, he has to take us on a guided tour using his special clearance. Meaning, we only get four hours to hunt for this extremely elusive spider. On this expedition, timing is everything. The tarantulas will be most active right around sunset, coming out of their burrows to hunt as darkness falls. The later it gets into the night, the more likely they've already found their ambush positions, making them all the more harder to find. And we have a bit of a hike ahead of us before we get to Juan's study location. To our delight though, we're already seeing promising signs that tonight will be a night for the spiders. Yo, big one right here. Oh yeah. We're out here looking for a big purple tarantula so this isn't exactly what we're looking for, but have a look at the size of that spider right there. This is a good sign that right at sunset here, these giant spiders are starting to move. I have no idea what species this is, but it's definitely one of yeah. the uh, South American bird eaters. As the sun sinks lower, odd creatures are starting to move. Right on cue, Juan is leading us off the main trail. His spot is up a game trail that follows a mountain stream up to the ridge. At the beginning of the dry season, this is a choke point where the forest's biodiversity is going to be concentrated, giving us the best chance at finding one of these brilliant spiders. But purple tarantulas are not the only unusual creatures on the move tonight. Have a look at that. That is a mountain crab. Now you probably didn't think that a crab that looked like that would live in a mountain freshwater ecosystem, but check that out right there. This is a huge one, large female as Harrison pointed out. And that is kind of crazy. So this area right here has actually dried up, but normally they would be hanging out at the water's edge and even in the water for cover. You can see she's bubbling a little bit. Um, what would she actually, how would she be handling the dry season, do you think? Well, this, that's, those are the main equations that we have here in, in the tropical dry forest in, in Guayaquil because um, as you can see right now, there's no water in, in this particular part of the, of the, of the forest and they, they do migrate a lot during the rainy season. They actually move from right now like we're 100 meters above sea level, let's say, and they will go all the way up to 400 to 500 meters above sea level. That's, uh, that's a very drastic migration. And be, if you compare it with other kind of crops that you will see many individuals moving from one side to another these guys they move most of the time by themselves huh. so imagine being in a forest of almost 15,000 acres finding your next partner right yeah. during the rainy season so you only have around four to three months to find your partner and mate and that do is, more sibling uh, sorry offsprings right that is incredible i mean just think about that like this is definitely you can see it's it's related to the same kinds you'd see at the beach and to think that one of these has evolved in a freshwater ecosystem in a changing freshwater ecosystem that's dry for half the year to be able to find mates to be able to find food and cover these guys are robust survivors here in cerro blanco 
That mountain crab is probably one of the coolest things that Cerro Blanco could have given us because this is a perfect example of some of the unique life that's able to evolve in these tropical habitats. And the thing is, it's not just these remote tropical areas that have crazy unique life forms when you actually take a closer look. Even our literal backyards, you'll find there's a lot of really unique life forms right out there too. This is kind of the whole reason I made this channel in the first place. I want to discover the secrets of the natural world and these unique life forms are those secrets. So if that's something you're enjoying and you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We have new adventures every Saturday evening and we'd be really happy to have you. As night takes hold, the way we explore changes. New animals are moving, but new dangers are lurking too. The extreme humidity and rough, rocky terrain means that every step is a hazard. We advance slowly, checking and double checking where our feet are landing and where our hands are gripping, because one wrong move could be a serious injury. But with greater risk, there is also greater reward. And as we advance into the darkness, the dry forest reveals some of her secrets. Have a look at this right here. Look how big she is. Hi, you. Hi. Have a look at that spider. That is a huge, huge tarantula. I'm going to lower my voice a little bit because she doesn't like me like blowing on her. And we don't want her to take a fall if we can avoid it. Look at the size of this animal right here. Massive, massive arachnid. And see, the thing about these giant tarantulas is they can take fall damage really easily. Because unlike wolf spiders and fishing spiders, they're very heavy bodied. And I can feel it, this animal has a weight to it. Now that the cover of darkness has fallen, a lot more of these guys are gonna be moving. Hunting around, using those petty palps to sniff around for all kinds of prey. And I'll tell you what, there are not a lot of things this spider would not be able to take down out here. While tarantula venom is not that dangerous here in the tropics of the Americas, just the sheer size of this animal means it can overpower reptiles, small mammals, probably even small birds. That is pretty incredible. What we're out here looking for today is a cousin of this spider. It is bright purple, absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and let her go back into the environment because we have limited time here, and those purple ones are calling our names. Hiking deeper into the night, we're seeing lots of individual tarantulas, but no purple yet. But as we get closer to the ridge that Juan spoke of, Harrison and I spot something very special. Right there. That purple. is so cool. Okay, so our luck is starting to get better and better. What I've got right here is the purple tarantula, but this is a juvenile. You can see. Very, very small compared to some of the tarantulas we've been seeing tonight. But that is purple. Look at that iridescent purple sheen on the cephalothorax right there. Do we try and pick it up? You can try. Now, when tarantulas are small like this, they can be particularly flighty. But just like with the bigger ones that we were working with, whoa, fast. Fast, but if we're gentle, we may, there we go, there you be go. able to get them in hand. Hi. Good guy. He is fast moving, but ooh, ooh. absolutely stunning. Look and they that. have a pretty good ability to cling, actually. I'm quite impressed with the fact that as he moves over my hand, the tips of his legs are basically able to cling onto my skin, almost as if he were arboreal. And what I have read about these Pamphobedius tarantulas is that they will spend most of their time on the ground but do occasionally climb small distances up in vegetation. And I can really feel how well these animals are able to climb as he's moving over my hands. That juvenile might be the only hint of a purple bloom bird eater that we'll get to see. We passed through Juan's Ridge and saw an unusual amount of large female tarantulas darting down burrows, some bigger than I'd ever seen before, but no purple. At this point, it's not looking too good. We have uh, a ways to go before we're back, and at this point, we probably are gonna go over time. <sighs> I really hope that wasn't the only purple bloom we're gonna see. It was a juvenile, but I really wanted to show you an adult. What's worse is, if it doesn't happen, I don't even know if I'm gonna have a full video from this trip. So, 
All we can do is press on, I guess. We began our descent back down the mountain, heading towards the parking lot. It was a valiant effort, but we just may have been asking too much of Ecuador on too little time. One of our teammates doubled back. We assumed to tie his shoe until we heard this. Can you lure it out? Oh, it's under this body. Uh, but it wasn't here, so I got it out of there. Don't really right. care. I'll light it. Yeah, there it is. We should get a container out, probably. Yeah. Definitely container. My bag. You still have eyes? Yeah, he's moving. She's backing out into this other crevice, but it's even smaller, so she has nowhere to go. She's coming. coming. She's coming. She's coming out. Oh, I saw like. Harrison, get container ready? Yep. Oh, oh that's wow. beautiful. <laughs> Don't panic, don't panic. Where's that rock? Okay. We got her. Yeah. Not quite. Don't panic, don't panic. Just you got, got it. You got it. Put it over here. Yep. Here, let me move this Get hook. Over nice and gentle. Yep. Nice and gentle. Don't Indeed. pressure. Indeed. Right. Just scoop her up under the lid. Get her under the lid and just scoop it up. One, two, got three. Got him. Yeah, yeah, there we go. go. Nice work, guys. Good team effort. Yeah. Well let me make sure none of her legs are. Yeah, she's good. She's good. Excellent you work, guys. What an absolutely amazing catch by Harrison. And honestly, a team catch with everyone here. Like that was probably one of the more chaotic catches you've seen on camera here. But look at the result. An absolute gorgeous, amazing spider right here. Look at the coloration of this. This is the purple bloom bird eater, the gem of Guayaquil, and possibly a new species of tarantula here in Ecuador. And I am overjoyed to be hands-on with this magnificent animal. We have been hiking hours through incredibly tough terrain, seeing tons and tons of tarantulas, but hoping for a glimpse of purple. And sure enough, Rex spotted it with his flashlight. You're saying, Spencer, you just said this is a new species. So what do we know about it? And that's a funny thing. We, we don't know a whole lot about it. Given that it's one of the Ecuadorian bird eaters, we would assume that this spider would be able to take down birds. And look at the size of it compared to my hand. I'm sure that one of these guys will be taking down insects and stuff, but there is no doubt in my mind that a spider this large could take down amphibians, reptiles, and you guessed it, birds. The craziest feature of this animal is that purple coloration, and we actually are not sure why they have it. They're not terribly venomous as far as we know, so we don't think it's aposomatic warning colors. Our best guess is that it's probably sexually selective. See, this spider is actually a male, and what's crazy is, it is possible that this entire evening, we've been walking past purple blooms the entire time. See, this ridge was covered in those giant females that kept running down into burrows. Those drab, brown, giant spiders may have been purple blooms all along. Now, look at how calm he is in my hands right here. As you can see, these huge spiders normally have a horrible reputation. You know, they're big, they're hairy, they're freaky looking, giant fangs, way too many legs. But the reality is this. He's sitting completely calm. You know, he was a little stressed out when we first got him, but that's the thing with tarantulas. Once they calm down, they are absolute sweethearts. Sweethearts, the, the most gentle animals you could possibly come across. And I almost compare them to like puppy dogs of the spider world. They're furry, they're velvety, honestly, really amazing to interact with. But this isn't something that I'd recommend you keep as a pet. These kinds of animals, they belong in the wild. This is a mid-tier predator hunting insects and all kinds of other small animals out here. And look at how big it is. This thing would be good food for a larger bird or mammalian predator. All around us, it's like a secret world. All these interactions that we don't fully understand. And if we remove these things from the wild, we don't know what the world looks like if these are to disappear. So. The best thing we can do is release it right back into this environment and let him go about his way and appreciate an absolutely amazing, unforgettable encounter with a beautiful, beautiful spider. The western part of Ecuador is one of the most biodiverse regions in the world, but nobody talks about it. And it's being cleared, it's being developed, and the suitable habitats for all of the unique creatures we saw this evening is dwindling. You know, it's actually possible that those crazy mountain crabs and these purple bloom tarantulas, it's actually possible they might disappear in our lifetimes. Ecuador was, believe it or not, my first time actually traveling internationally. It's kind of crazy to see 
all of the things that I've been able to do on this trip. But it all comes back to that central mission of discovering and sharing the secrets of the natural world, like this purple bloom bird eater, like all of the crazy animals we've seen down here in Ecuador. The more these videos spread, the more attention we can give these animals, the better chance we have at preserving them for the future. And it's not just Ecuador that has these crazy secrets. Even back home in the United States, there's all sorts of really bizarre life lurking right outside our doors. And one of the strangest is a spider native to Florida, a spider from the same exact lineage as the Brazilian wandering spider that may be decently toxic. It's not often seen, but actually this spring, I tried my hand at going after it. And if you wanna see that adventure, check it out right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.